Well, good day to you all, dear ones, and welcome to this 15th day of December, day 349 in our journey through the Bible. Hello to everyone out there. My name's Hunter. I am your brother and Bible reading coach. Somebody who shows up every day to spend a little time together in the pages of the Bible, and we're going to let those pages point the way to the person that is Jesus himself, the living word of God. The one alone who has the words of life. So we come. From all around this beautiful world, we gather here to warm ourselves by the fires of God's love. Make no mistake about it. That is who God is through and through. And today, we're in the book of James, who says that God is light. <laughs> And that there is no darkness in him, there is no shadow, there is no turning. Every good and perfect gift comes from him. And today, we're going to receive from that good God of ours in the book of James, chapters 1 through 4. Glad you're here, friend. Let's open our hearts now. James chapter 1. This letter is from James a slave of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ. I am writing to the twelve tribes, Jewish believers scattered abroad. Greetings. Dear brothers and sisters, when troubles of any kind come your way, consider it an opportunity for great joy. For you know that when your faith is tested, your endurance has a chance to grow. So let it grow. For when your endurance is fully developed, you will be perfect and complete, needing nothing. If you need wisdom, ask your generous God, and he will give it to you. He will not rebuke you for asking. But when you ask him, be sure that your faith is in God alone. Do not waver, for a person with divided loyalty is as unsettled as a wave of the sea that is blown and tossed by the wind. Such people should not expect to receive anything from the Lord. Their loyalty is divided between God and the world, and they are unstable in everything they do. Believers who are poor have something to boast about, for God has honored them. And those who are rich should boast that God has humbled them. They will fade away like a little flower in the field. The hot sun rises and the grass withers and the little flower droops and falls and its beauty fades away. In the same way, the rich will fade away with all their achievements. For God blesses those who patiently endure testing and temptation. Afterward, they will receive the crown of life that God has promised to those who love him. And remember, when you are being tempted, do not say, God is tempting me. God is never tempted to do wrong, and he never tempts anyone else. Temptation comes from our own desires, which entice us and drag us away. These desires give birth to sinful actions, and when sin is allowed to grow, it gives birth to death. So do not be misled, my dear brothers and sisters, Whatever is good and perfect is a gift coming down to us from God, our Father, who created all the lights in the heavens. He never changes or casts a shifting shadow. He chose to give birth to us by giving us his true word. And we, out of all creation, became his prized possessions. Understand this, my dear brothers and sisters. You must all be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to get angry. Human anger does not produce the righteousness God desires. So get rid of all the filth and evil in your lives and humbly accept the word God has planted in your hearts, for it has the power to save your souls. But don't just listen to God's word. You must do what it says. Otherwise, you are only fooling yourselves. For if you listen to the word and don't obey, it is like glancing at your face in a mirror. You see yourself, walk away, and forget what you look like. But if you look carefully into the perfect law that sets you free, and if you do what it says and don't forget what you heard, then God will bless you for doing it. If you claim to be righteous but don't control your tongue, you're fooling yourself, and your religion is worthless. Pure and genuine religion in the sight of God the Father means caring for orphans and widows in their distress and refusing to let the world corrupt you. James 2 
My dear brothers and sisters, how can you claim to have faith in our glorious Lord Jesus Christ if you favor some people over others? For example, suppose someone comes into your meeting dressed in fancy clothes and expensive jewelry, and another comes in who is poor and dressed in dirty clothes. If you give special attention and a good seat to the rich person, but you say to the poor one, you can stand over there or sit on the floor, well... Doesn't this discrimination show that your judgments are guided by evil motives? Listen to me, dear brothers and sisters. Hasn't God chosen the poor in this world to be rich in faith? Aren't they the ones who will inherit the kingdom he promised to those who love him? But you dishonor the poor. Isn't it the rich who oppress you and drag you into court? Aren't they the ones who slander Jesus Christ, whose noble name you bear? Yes, indeed, it is good when you obey the royal laws found in the scriptures. Love your neighbor as yourself. But if you favor some people over others, you are committing a sin. You are guilty of breaking the law. For the person who keeps all the laws except one is as guilty as a person who has broken all God's laws. For the same God who said you must not commit adultery also said you must not murder. So if you murder someone but you don't commit adultery... You've still broken the law. So whatever you say or whatever you do, remember that you will be judged by the law that set you free. There will be no mercy for those who have not shown mercy to others. But if you have been merciful, God will be merciful when he judges you. What good is it, dear brothers and sisters, if you say you have faith, but you don't show it by your actions? Can that kind of faith save anyone? Suppose you see a brother or sister who has no food or clothing, and you say, Goodbye, have a good day, stay warm and eat well. But then you don't give that person any food or clothing. What good does that do? So you see, faith by itself isn't enough. Unless it produces good deeds, it is dead and useless. Now someone may argue, Some people have faith, others have good deeds. But I say, How can you show me your faith if you don't have good deeds? I will show you my faith by my good deeds. You say, you have faith. You believe that there is one God. Good for you. Even the demons believe this, and they tremble in terror. How foolish! Can't you see that faith without good deeds is useless? Don't you remember that our ancestor Abraham was shown to be right with God by his actions when he offered his son Isaac on the altar? You see, his faith and his actions worked together. His actions made his faith complete. And so it happened just as the scriptures say, Abraham believed God and God counted him as righteous because of his faith. He was even called the friend of God. So you see, we are shown to be right with God by what we do, not by faith alone. Rahab the prostitute is another example. She was shown to be right with God by her actions when she hid those messengers and sent them safely away by a different road. Just as the body is dead without breath, So also faith is dead without good works. James 3. Dear brothers and sisters, not many of you should become teachers in the church, for we who teach will be judged more strictly. Indeed, we all make many mistakes, for if we could control our tongues, we would be perfect, and we can control ourselves in every other way. We can make a large horse go wherever we want by means of a small bit in its mouth. And a small rudder makes a huge ship turn wherever the pilot chooses to go, even though the winds are strong. In the same way, the tongue is a small thing that makes grand speeches. But a tiny spark can set a great forest on fire. And among all the parts of the body, the tongue is a flame of fire. It is a whole world of wickedness, corrupting your entire body. It can set your whole life on fire, for it is set on fire by hell itself. People can tame all kinds of animals, birds, reptiles, and fish, but no one can tame the tongue. It is restless and evil, full of deadly poison. Sometimes it praises our Lord and Father, and sometimes it curses those who have been made in the image of God. And so blessing and cursing come pouring out of the same mouth. Surely, my brothers and sisters, this is not right. Does a spring of water bubble up with both fresh water and bitter water? Does a fig tree produce olives or a grapevine produce figs? No. And you can't draw fresh water from a salty spring. 
If you are wise and understand God's ways, prove it by living an honorable life, doing good works with humility that comes from wisdom. But if you are bitterly jealous and there is selfish ambition in your hearts, don't cover up the truth with boasting and lying. For jealousy and selfishness are not God's kind of wisdom. Such things are earthly, unspiritual, and demonic. For wherever there is jealousy and selfish ambition, there you will find disorder and evil of every kind. But the wisdom from above is first of all pure. It is also peace-loving, gentle at all times, and willing to yield to others. It is full of mercy and the fruit of good deeds. It shows no favoritism and is always sincere. And those who are peacemakers will plant seeds of peace and reap a harvest of righteousness. James 4 What is causing the quarrels and the fights among you? Don't they come from the evil desires at war within you? You want what you don't have, so you scheme and kill to get it. You are jealous of what others have, but you can't get it, so you fight and wage war to take it away from them. Yet you don't have what you want because you don't ask God for it. And even when you ask, you don't get it because your motives are all wrong. You want only what will give you pleasure. You adulterers, don't you realize that friendship with the world makes you an enemy of God? I say it again. If you want to be a friend of the world, you make yourself an enemy of God. Do you think the scriptures have no meaning? They say that God is passionate, that the spirit he has placed within us should be faithful to him. And he gives grace generously. As the scriptures say, God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. So humble yourselves before God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Come close to God and God will come close to you. Wash your hands, you sinners. Purify your hearts, for your loyalty is divided between God and the world. Let there be tears for what you've done. Let there be sorrow and deep grief. Let there be sadness instead of laughter and gloom instead of joy. Humble yourself before the Lord, and he will lift you up in honor. Don't speak evil against each other, dear brothers and sisters. If you criticize and judge each other, then you are criticizing and judging God's law. But your job is to obey the law, not to judge whether it applies to you. God alone who gave the law is the judge. He alone has the power to save or to destroy so what right do you have to judge your neighbor? Look here, you who say, Today or tomorrow we're going to a certain town and we'll stay there a year. We'll do business there and make a profit. How do you know what your life will be like tomorrow? Your life is like the morning fog. It's here a little while, then it's gone. What you ought to say is, If the Lord wants us to, we will live and do this or that. Otherwise, you're boasting about your own pretentious plans, and all such boasting is evil. Remember, it is a sin to know what you ought to do and then not to do it. James 5 Look here, you rich people. Weep and groan with anguish because of all the terrible troubles ahead of you. Your wealth is rotting away and your fine clothes are moth-eaten rags. Your gold and silver are corroded. The very wealth you're counting on will eat away your flesh like fire. This corroded treasure you have hoarded will testify against you on the day of judgment. For listen, hear the cries of the field workers whom you have cheated of their pay. The cries of those who harvest your fields have reached the ears of the Lord of Heaven's armies. You have spent your years on earth in luxury, satisfying your every desire. You have fattened yourselves for the day of slaughter. You have condemned and killed innocent people who did not resist you. Dear brothers and sisters, be patient as you wait for the Lord's return. Consider the farmer who patiently waits for the rains in the fall and in the spring. They eagerly wait for the valuable harvest to ripen. You too must be patient. Take courage, for the coming of the Lord is near. Don't grumble about each other, brothers and sisters, or you will be judged, for look, the judge is standing at the door. For examples of patience and suffering, dear brothers and sisters, look at the prophets who spoke in the name of the Lord. We give great honor to those who endure under suffering. For instance, you know about Job, a man of great endurance. You can see how the Lord was kind to him at the end. For the Lord is full of tenderness and mercy. But most of all, my brothers and sisters, never take an oath by heaven or earth or anything else. Just say a simple yes or no, so that you will not sin and be condemned. 
Are any of you suffering hardship? You should pray. Are any of you happy? You should sing praises. Are any of you sick? You should call for the elders of the church to come and pray over you. Anoint you with oil in the name of the Lord. Such a prayer offered in faith will heal the sick, and the Lord will make you well. And if you have committed any sins, you will be forgiven. Confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The earnest prayer of a righteous person has great power and produces wonderful results. Elijah was as human as we are, and yet when he prayed earnestly that no rain would fall, none fell for three and a half years. Then when he prayed again, the sky sent down rain and the earth began to yield its crops. My dear brothers and sisters, if someone among you wanders away from the truth and is brought back, you can be sure that whoever brings the sinner back from wandering will save that person from death and bring about the forgiveness of many sins. And now may our Lord, who brought us back, forgave our sins. May he now give his blessing to the reading of his word. Amen. Wanders back from wandering. That's the story of grace. All of us have wandered off like sheep. Each of us have strayed off on our own path. But the Lord caused the sin of all of us to fall on him. We have all wandered away. But God, the good shepherd, has pursued us, the wandering ones. He's come after all of his wandering sheep. He wasn't content just to have 99. No, he went after the one as well. And that's such good news, my friend, that God's love his and his actions were on behalf of the whole world. Behold the Lamb of God who was slain for the sins of the world. That's the enormity of the gospel. It's for everyone. Sometimes that news seems so good, it seems too good to be true. And I think that's what James is referring to when he says that sometimes we look into the mirror and then forget what we look like. We forget that he chose to give birth to us by giving us his true word, that we are his prized possessions, that we are children of God. This is what James wants us to see when we look into the mirror of God's word. He says, sometimes we see our face, we see this, but then we turn around and we forget what we look like. It's easy to forget because the news just seems too good to be true. So all too often we turn around and we begin to believe the lie that none of that is true. So instead of the truth of our union with God, instead of the truth of our adoption in Christ, instead of the truth of his very presence in us, we go back to the lie of distance and delay that God is far from us. He is disapproving of us. He is judging us. We forget who we are. We forget the value that God has placed upon us, that he would come and offer himself for us. We forget that God's love is that big for all people. And we go back to our own way of life because we think it's just too good to be true. James wants to remind us what manner of people we are. So let's look deeply into the word of God Let's look Christologically. Let's make sure that we are seeing all Scripture through Jesus. Because when we do, not only is he revealing who the Father is in the Father's heart, he's also revealing who you are. The value that the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit have placed upon your life. And not only on your life, but on every human being that's ever been born. And I know that sometimes that just seems too good to be true. But if we look intently, if we look and invite the Holy Spirit to help us to see Jesus, we will know that it's far better than we've ever imagined. 
and we will know that we are loved. And the prayer for my own soul is that I will see it and that I will walk away not forgetting it, but instead reflecting it back into the world, into my relationships, into my marriage, into my relationship with my children, into this world. That's a prayer that I have for my soul. That's the prayer that I have for my family, for my wife and my daughters and my son. And that's a prayer that I have for you. May it be so. Let's continue now in a time of prayer. Feel free to read along with these prayers in the show notes of today's podcast and meditate on these words that are being spoken over you, your family, and our world. And now, let us pray. Lord God, Almighty and Everlasting Father, you have brought us in safety to this new day. Preserve us with your mighty power that we might not fall into sin or be overcome by adversity. And in all we do, direct us to the fulfilling of your purpose through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O God, you have made of one blood all the peoples of the earth and sent your blessed Son to preach peace to those who are far and those who are near. Grant that people everywhere may seek after you and find you. Bring the nations into your fold, pour out your Spirit on all flesh, and hasten the coming of your kingdom. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now, Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light, and where there is sadness, joy. O Lord, grant that I might not seek so much to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in the giving that we receive, in the pardoning that we are pardoned. It is in the dying that we are born unto eternal life. Amen. And now as our Lord has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Well, thank you, dear ones, for joining me again in this time of prayer and our time through the scriptures. And these times that we have each day are the result of folks coming alongside Heather and I and saying, hey, we want to partner with you to make this happen. These podcasts are entirely listener supported. Nothing is held behind a paywall. We don't have any sponsors. It is just you. And so I want to say a big thank you to a few of our partners, to Suzanne Makasevic, Scott Boren, Kristen McClellan, Akamelish Zawadi, Jan Longnecker, David and Julie Nevue, Christina Blaney, and David and Tammy Swain. Blessings to you all, my sisters, my brothers, my co-laborers in this work of the Lord. And if you're listening today and your daily life has found value with the Daily Radio Bible and you are able to give would you consider partnering with us? 
not only for the value that you derive from the podcast, but also on behalf of those who are unable to give, for them too, so that this podcast can be here for all of us. And all you have to do is head on over to the webpage, dailyradiobible.com, and click on the donate link. There's also a donation link right in the show notes of this podcast. And you can give there, or if you're old school, you can also reach us at Daily Radio Bible, 2748 Northeast Molini Way, Hillsboro, Oregon, 97124. Well, hey, we've done it, friends. We have done it again. We've spent another day in the Bible, and I plan on being back here again tomorrow to do the same. Lord willing, and the creek don't rise, your brother Hunter plans on being here. Until that time, let's go forward in God's joy. Let's let his joy be our strength. And let us always remember this. That you are loved. No doubt about it. Alrighty, talk to you again tomorrow. You guys take care.